Will you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the love of your Son, Jesus Christ. Strengthen us today to love as he has loved us. We ask this in the name of love, the name of Jesus. Amen. The text for this morning's message is the Gospel reading, especially these verses, these words of our Lord. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lays down his life for his friends. This is our text. Grace, mercy, and peace to you all from God our Father, through our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It was just over a month ago. A little bit more than a month now. It was March 23rd, 2018. The day and the Friday before Good Friday. So just for the sake of context here, this is the Friday before the Friday of our Lord's sacrifice. His death to save us from the sins that hold us hostage. Good Friday is a defining day. For us Christians. And March 23rd, Friday, March 23rd, 2018, was a defining day for the small town of Trent in southern France, as well as a defining day for, for all of France and one man in particular. The day in the marketplace started like any other, with customers coming and, and going, and it was the case, as is the case in, in most marketplaces in small communities. And in my case, growing up, it was the Walmart in town, and what happens is you go to this place of, of commerce, but it is also a place of greeting, because as you're buying the goods you need, you see a neighbor over there and a friend over there, and that was the situation here. Just normal, everyday stuff. Buyers buying, sellers selling. Just normal, peaceful activity. And then the shout was heard. Allahu Akbar. The ISIS-inspired terrorist stormed into the supermarket building, brandishing a handgun and a large knife. Get down, get down, don't move, he shouted, while almost simultaneously firing a lethal shot into an innocent bystander. The first of four killed and four injured by this terrorist. Once inside that, that supermarket building within the greater market area, once he was inside, his next move was to secure a hostage, a human shield. And so he grabbed the cashier and pulled her close. She would do. A scene of chaos. And then into this chaos, into this destruction and this death, stepped a man. Arnold Beltram stepped into the store. Arnold Beltram was a police officer, a gendarme. And as Mr. Beltram approached the store, he came unarmed. And intentionally so, because the reason Mr. Beltram was entering the supermarket was because he had an offer to make the terrorist. What a, what a frightening, horrific situation, especially for this cashier-turned-human shield. To be blindsided. Just going about your day and then all of a sudden to be overpowered by the sudden appearance of evil. 
Such a helpless feeling to be, to be taken hostage, held powerless, all the while knowing that death is nipping at your heels. And that wherever this is headed, it will not end well. You and I have probably never been in that situation, at least not physically. And yet, if you've ever known life outside of Christ, you've been there spiritually, whether you felt it or not. And even for those of us who grow up consistently in the faith, we too know what it's like to be blindsided by evil, to be going about our day when all of a sudden, boom, there it is, to be blindsided often by some sin, maybe our own, maybe some sin of another, to be going about a a normal day when, boom, evil invades. Maybe it's in the form of a past adultery, that is over and done and history, and yet it has come to light. Or, or some lying gossip we thought was relatively innocent at the time coming to full fruition unexpectedly. We all know what it's like to be going about our day and then have some sin or some consequence of sin just seem to come out of nowhere. And then bam, there we are, face to face with it, seemingly powerless against it. This is how sin works. This is our natural fallen condition. Much like that helpless cashier, our sins hold us hostage. We often feel ourselves helplessly tied to our sinful desires and, frankly, our sinful habits. So much so that when a sin is discovered, when someone points it out to us, our gut move natural reaction is to either act like it isn't a sin or, or deny we really committed it in the first place. To lie. To add sin on top of sin. To tie ourselves up even more. Because we can't even bring ourselves to acknowledge it. Hostages. To our own sin. And all the while, the wages of sin, death, is nipping at our heels. And we are vaguely aware that if things continue on this trajectory, they won't end well. It's a chaotic feeling, if you've ever been there. And into this chaos, into this destruction and death, steps A man, a man who not only tells us that the greatest form of love is to lay down one's life for another, but a man who lives it out. Jesus Christ stepped into our human world with all of us held hostage and bondage to our base instincts and our self-centered habits. And Jesus shows us He doesn't just tell us. He shows us that the greatest form of love comes from self-sacrifice. From one person substituting his life for another. And the crazy thing is, Jesus himself was the first human being in like thousands of years to not be held in bondage. To not be held hostage by the reality of sin that plagues all of us. Jesus was like the first human in forever to not be naturally bound to sin. And yet, with a perfect willingness, with a perfect sense of control, 
Christ switched places with us. He became our substitute. To those held hostage by their own sins, Christ gave his freedom. And he submitted himself to the place of our captivity, to the destruction and death of our sins. He laid down his life for us. He became the substitute and we became free. It's why we call it Good Friday. Because we were staring down the barrel of a loaded gun and someone took our place. Because this is what love looks like. This is perfect love. Love is an exchange or an offering of oneself for, on behalf of, someone else. Gendarme Beltram made a similar offer. Although not for the whole world, only a small French village, and not for eternal salvation, but simply one person's physical safety. Still, he made it. Beltram's offer was to take the place of that cashier to become a substitute for that young lady. And the terrorist agreed, and he let her go. Now, what exactly transpired in the next two hours is difficult to say with any certainty. But when the forces eventually stormed the store and killed the terrorist, when the chaos and the smoke cleared and the body of gendarme Beltram was discovered, it was soon apparent that the fatal wound for Mr. Beltram was not a bullet fired from anyone's gun, but instead from the knife of the terrorist at some point in that two-hour window. This man who volunteered as a substitute had suffered the full reality of that substitution. What would have happened to her happened to him. And as the press began covering this news story, the questions were raised. Why did he do this? How could he do this? And many answers were given, depending on who you ask. Some said perhaps it was his training kicking into gear. Others said maybe he was simply braver than the rest of us. And all this is possible, and there are contributing factors, no doubt. But there was also this. Beltram was a Christian. And not simply a Christian, but he was an enthusiastic Christian, born and raised as an unbeliever. He discovered the forgiveness and the freedom of Christ at 33 years old. See, he had known a life outside of Christ. And he knew what he was called to now that he was united to Christ. And he knew the difference. He knew he was called to love. His priest, Father Jean Baptiste, said this quote, It seems to me that only his faith can explain the madness of this sacrifice. He understood, as Jesus told us, that there is no greater love than to give one's life for one's friends. He knew that if his life belonged to Marielle, his wife, it also belonged to God, to France, and to his brothers in danger of death. I believe that only a Christian faith could ask for this sacrifice. Unquote. But this sacrifice is only the tiniest picture 
of what Christ has done for us. The faintest reflection, the thinnest shadow. Jesus Christ stepped into this world as more than a mere physical substitute for physical safety. He is a physical substitute with cosmic, eternal implications. And one of them is that we are now free to love one another just as he has loved us. True love has little to do with happy feelings, with mushy cards, or sentimental sap. True love says to the self, self, die. True love says it's not about me, it's about others. I live for others. And of course, unless you're in law enforcement, your vocation probably won't require this sacrifice from you fully and literally. But that doesn't mean that it ceases to apply. Husbands, sometimes it is your duty to say no to yourself, to say no to watching the game or hitting the hunting grounds in order to say yes to someone else, in order to give your wife your full and undivided attention. Young people, Sometimes this means saying no to yourself. Saying no to a movie or or an outing you wish you could go be at right now in order to say yes to someone else. Like a parent who has a different priority for you. Or a church that needs your involvement. No matter your vocation, love is not about preserving the self. Love is not even really about feeling happy. Love is about laying down oneself for others. We have an amazing liberty as Christians. Because while we do struggle with sins, and at times it does feel like we are helpless and like they define us, they do not define us. They do not hold us hostage, imprison us forever, helpless and hopeless. We have been set free because someone else stepped into our world. Someone else said no to his life and said yes to ours. And it's a good thing, too, because we could have never saved ourselves. We could never have worked our way out of our tangled knots of sin. And so Christ said, Here, take me instead. True, this human deserves death, but let me taste it instead. Let this one Yes, this one deserves this cross, I know, but take me instead, because I love them. Even now, while they're still struggling with those sins, I love them. And greater love has no one than this. So take my life instead. We will never emulate this love perfectly. We can never do it perfectly. But God grant us the strength to try. Amen.